All right. Hey, my whole squad. How are you? Um, I've had, I got a few new hoes. Hey, y'all. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you all for coming in. Thank you all. Are y'all sharing me? If you are not, why not? Anyway, we're getting back to the perform the perfumers series that I started with Mace, with Francis Kirk John. Remember that one? All right. <clears throat> This one should have been out a while ago, honestly. <laughs> but uh, uh, we're going to see what happens. The first time I accidentally deleted the video. The second time the audio was terrible. So I had to get rid of that. And now we're trying it again for the third time. So hopefully, as I say, the third time is the charm. Oh, and before we also get started, listen, I'm going to be putting up fragrances and my hands might look a tad bit janky. And that's because I've been working in the garden. I was out in the garden this morning because it's like, you know, in the September, um, I'm trying to like get things together. And so I was working and my hands, I rarely, put, I always forget to put on my gloves. But anyway, I'm going to show you a few pictures right here. So we have things going on in the garden. The first thing that's going on is my lemongrass has gone crazy. I didn't know lemongrass could get this wild and overgrown. So that's the lemongrass. So I had to cut all that out and then I put it in the garbage bag because I'm going to be tying it up. I'm going to give some of it away because I have too, way too much. And then I'm saving some, drying it out for tea because I'm starting to get into this herbs for tea thing. That's going to be one of my focuses next year. Just letting you know ahead of time. Um, <clears throat> then next up is... My begonias and zinnias then lost their mind. They totally out of control. I, I got to figure out how to deal with begonias, not begonias, marigolds and zinnias. Because marigolds are really good to have in your around your plants because it keeps the pest away. Aphids and things, they, you know, but I didn't, they lost, it's too much. They take it over the whole thing. So I have to figure out how I'm going to be doing things next year. So anyway, the... And finally, the tomatoes. The tomatoes are out of control. Tomatoes gone wild. That's what I'm calling it. It's too much going on. Their one tomato plant has just fallen over from the weight. I didn't stake it correctly. I didn't know it was going to get that big because it was real small for a minute. And then, honey, it rained for a couple of days and it just went whoop over. So the tomatoes are out of control. So here are the tomatoes that I got. <laughs> that I harvested today and that's not all of them I still have a lot that are green that I need to you know I, I so this is what I got today I'm going to I think what I'm gonna do is I know y'all wonder what I'm gonna do <laughs> I have some green tomatoes in there beautiful green tomatoes I'm about to fry me some green tomatoes for the first time we'll see how that works out and then the small ones I already have made me a big jar of sun-dried tomatoes. So what I think I'm about to do is do some smaller jars of sun-dried tomatoes and use those, um, and you know, like for presents or something. And then, I know I have an overabundance, so I'm going to be roasting tomatoes with some um, shallots and some garlic for tomato sauce. So I'll be making myself some tomato sauce. And But what I am going to roast some and freeze them roasted for soup so it'll be part of a soup base so i think the next batch of roasted is just going to be roasted and put in a you know put to be frozen just to be used for you know um for a soup base whereas the next batch that because it's going to be another batch that I roast is going to be made into a big, a nice size uh, sauce. Because I already have some that I roasted for sauce. And then I'm going to do a few more. <clears throat> now, I know y'all didn't really want to know all that about my garden. But I decided I should. Because some of you all did want to know. So, I kind of like, you see how I incorporate things? I multitask in a video. I, that's what I do. I'm a multitask. Okay. So, we have a garden update. And now, let's get in to <laughs> the perfumers.
All right, so we're going to be talking about three perfumers in this one. And the reason why is because they actually have collaborated on a few things and, and they are intertwined. So because of that, I'm going to talk about them, all three of them together. And they kind of go in order. So the first one is Dominique Ropion. And we and most of us who are in fragrance community know about Dominique Ropion because he has been involved in some of some very iconic fragrances, super iconic fragrances that are still around today, things like that. So we're gonna start out with the first iconics that we want to talk about. Then we'll go into some more. Woo! All right. The first one we're gonna talk about is his work with Frederick Mall. And the first one we're going to talk about is Portrait of a Lady. I have a decant right here. I've actually done a whole video on the differences between Portrait of a Lady, Purpura, and whichever one that was, was that I had was a dupe of it. But anyway, this is a spicy rose. <laughs> Why did it take so long for me to say? This is a spicy rose. This is very iconic. It is very well known and can be and people who know fragrances you wear portrait of a lady they will know you're wearing it but this had this has a space of its own in fragrance in the fragrance world because it is one of those um iconic roses it's very deep it's very rich it's very in your face it is kind of can be polarizing because it is you either love it or you like know it's too much so it can be overpowering but it's a really spicy rose with a little raspberry in it so it's got a little um juicy fruitiness to it it is quite beautiful if you are ready for this type of rose so this is portrait of a lady and then of course he did where's my where's my thing of it i just was playing with it oh here it is <laughs> not that and then of course he did carnal flower carnal flower is a tuberose for the tuberose lover I forgot how incredibly sexy and beautiful this is. This is a beautiful, beautiful, in your face, full of tuberose. Just, you have to be ready for this gorgeously ecstatic white floral that speaks volumes, you know, and turns heads. And is a an icon when it comes down to white florals carnal flower which is what it is it is a very sensual very seductive fl white floral so that's carnal flower next up on his um iconic fragrances y'all right alien if you didn't know dominique ropion created alien now i don't have the original alien because i have a uh uh don't like it but some can like it vibe with it and right now i was on the don't like it i said i'm gonna get a a spray a travel spray to try it out again maybe i'm ready for it now maybe i'm ready for it but what i do like are the flankers so so here are some of the flankers that i own that he did and i have alien fusion which is tuberose and ginger and that's what you get on the beginning but honestly this just becomes alien this just becomes an alien so in the beginning, you get that spicy ginger, you get that vibe, but ultimately it's an alien. It really is. And then we have, which one is this? Is this Oh Sublime? Alien Oh Sublime. Now this one, I've got to get me another one of these. But this is a beautiful solar fragrance. I love the aliens for the summertime, most of them. So this is a beautiful solar fragrance. It has, you know, this bright sunniness to it, but it does have that alien DNA. Then we have Alien O Extraordinaire. Now this is one that does not have jasmine, but it still has an alien vibe, but he did it without the jasmine. And so this is a little more, uh, has a little more, um, a little more it's a little it's a tad more exotic than the than what you expect right so it gives you a little alien vibe with an unexpected twist because it has your line line so it has a different vibe to it more yellow florals and a little more and it has a little more complexity to it than a lot of the aliens so that is alien oh extraordinaire this is the latest one this is alien hypersense i have to be honest i'm not sure about this one i am not sure about this one um it's got a lot of caramel in it 
I'm not feeling I wasn't feeling it, but it was it came out in the summertime. Now to be quite honest, I don't think this should have came out. I know they always bring out these aliens in the summertime, but this was not a summertime alien. This is a fall alien. So I'm gonna try it out now. Um I'm sure it'd be a fall winter because of the caramel. So I'm gonna see how it plays now as it gets colder because not yet because it's not cool enough but this this is like the caramel jasmine alien that you know some of y'all might want i'm not sure about me we're gonna find out if not it will be decluttered now he has done a lot of work with lancome and i don't own any of them now even though i'm thinking about getting one but he's done almost every La Via Bell. So if you love La Via Bell, you have a lot of Dominic Ropions. By the way, as I talk about these perfumers, please put in the comments the ones that you have by the perfumer. Let me know what you have and how, do you love it? Did it work out for you? Did you know you tried it? It did work? Whatever. But the one that I have, and he, I think he did some of the Tresors too. But the one that I have that he did for a Lancome is Jasmine's Marzipan. Now, I have to be quite honest. I love it, but not for what they say you should. What they say is that this is a candied almond. You get this candied almond, that Marzipan. I don't get it. What I get is a clean, beautiful, beautiful Jasmine. So... I think as it as I have it, it's starting to give me a little, little candy, jazz like that marzipan pan, pan vibe. But being honest, I just really haven't gotten it from it. But what I do like, excuse me, what I do like it for is the beautiful jasmine that it really is. And so this is Jasmine's Marzipan by Maison Lancome. Before I finish talking about the fragrances of Mr. Ropion. I forgot. I got so excited talking about the fragrances. I forgot to talk about him as a person. Okay, so let me just give y'all some more information about him. Dominique Ropion um, has worked with um, IFF, which is a huge um, international fragrance and flavors. So they create fragrances for many brands, not just the ones I mentioned, but huge, but so many brands go through IFF and so many perfumers work with through IFF. That is who they work with. So if someone says something like, Oh, it's IFF. IFF is not connected to any brand brands contract with them to work with the perfumers and he is one of them and he has a huge body of work in Fragrantica he has 363 fragrances that he is listed on that he has created so he has been around for years he is a master perfumer I will list some of the um, awards that he has won over the years and things like that so right now that's it so let's finish up with Dominique Ropion and then we'll go into some other ones so now um the one the last ones I'm going to say that he did by himself are this is this and that's the girl of nows by Elisab now he did the original girl of now girl of now shine and girl of now forever so if you know girl of now this is a beautiful orange blossom nutty pistachio almond it is a gorgeous sweet over the top fragrance now let me tell you something this is a compliment getter and men love it i'm just saying men because i men love it because men love it my son was like oh my god when it was years ago i had him try out some stuff and this is the one he loved the most girl of now shine is very similar to it but it adds in the pineapple i have done a whole review of these i'll probably be doing one soon because i got the newest one to get and i'll go over the whole line again but girl of now shine is gorgeous it's pineapple-y it, it has the same thing but it has this brightness and this juiciness from the pineapple and this is a pineapple i like and so yeah this is girl of now shine and then we have girl of now forever which is a departure from the first two this one is is rose and it has raspberry and lemon so it has a tartness 
that will give you a Delina vibe. It does not smell like Delina, but it is, there are some similarities because it has that tartness and that juicy root. It has that juicy raspberry and lemon, which gives it the sweet tartness. So that is Girl of Now Forever. All right, next we're going to talk about Anne Flippo. She is another... Um, I think I said that right. She's another master perfumer. She has works with IFF. Her body of work is at 229. So she's right behind Dominique Gropion. She has been around um, doing her thing. I don't own a lot of her. And to be quite honest, I find like some of the more really super popular perfumers I don't have as much of because I, I think it's because I don't buy as many of the ultra popular fragrances so just bear with me as I get into this perfumer series and you see the people that I have and the things I have I might be doubling up on some but anyway let's get going now I'm gonna have to put this one up here because I cannot find it and it is coach and it's the brown tag one now I love it it's just a really gorgeous floral fragrance it's very everyday-ish it's very just easy breezy to wear I really enjoy it um, and I usually keep it at work I think it's at work because it's usually one of my work fragrances just to have around just in case I need to freshen up it's really you know it's it's non offensive you know you're not going to get too many complaints you're just gonna smell good so that's Coach the Brown Tag because there's different tags. And this is one of the original Coach ones. Next up is Woman by Ralph Lauren. Love this bottle. This is a tuberose. This is a white floral. This is a classic white floral. Um, honestly, I like this one, but I still do want Woman Intense because it, it's a little more intense. But this is a stunning white floral. This is a good one if you are dipping your toe into white florals and tuberoses and you don't want something that's too overpowering. Woman is a very good place to start. So this is Woman. Then I have this. This is Tuberose Hedoni by Roger and Galette. This is an straight to cologne. Now, I always say these and my, um, uh, whatever the other one is, what's the other name? I can't think of. These are like Jo Malone. They give off, they, and I'm not saying they smell like Jo Malone's, but they're similar in concentration, the way they wear on your skin. However, the price point on these is so much better. But Tuberose Head on Knee is a really gorgeous, just summertime tuberose it's got a, a lightness to it a freshness to it hold on it has a lightness a freshness to it honey i had to sneeze y'all um and it really is a way to wear tuberose where it's not too much because like tuberose can be overpowering tuberose is really a fragrance for people is a is a note that you have to be someone who can handle the tuberose because sometimes it's just a little much. This is a perfect tuberose because it's a little lighter. It's a little airier. It's an extract to cologne. So it's not going to last forever, but it does last about three or four hours. So it does, you know, nice little overspray. You're going to get some look on. And I didn't even notice it, but look, they got a name on it. I didn't even notice that. I didn't even notice that y'all just... An I didn't notice that till now that she's got her name on it. That's so cute. I love it. All right. And the last perfume we're going to talk about today is Fanny Ball. <clears throat> hmm. I see all kinds of stuff. Okay. Anyway, Fanny Ball. Now, Fanny Ball is the, I would say the youngest of the group, the youngest perfumer of the group of three of the trio and that's because and she has 90 in the Fragrantica uh, database she trained under Dominique Ropion so they have a relationship and you know so because of it she takes chances and done things that are interesting just like he has so her breakthrough fragrances were with Frederick Mall which was Promise and Eau de Magnolia so those are the ones that she did I have not tried those but I'm just letting you know those are the fanny balls now the ones that I have are Histoire de Parfums Ultra Quidon this is part of this black line um this one has a pineapple note in it it has like this kind of rich 
warm fruitiness to it like but it's pineapple based with a lot of uh uh like this really deep feeling to it i'm trying to describe this well but it has a really deep rich feeling to it and it and as it dries down it gets really woody it becomes very um very sophisticated it's a very elegant fragrance i cannot explain it well but the but it has notes of pineapple and it has um i think it has orange blossom and it has a nice woody base now the thing with this, this is super unisex. Anybody could wear it. It's going to be ultra sexy on a man, though. I think it's ooh, ooh, ultra, ultra cuidant on a man. Ultra, ultra sexy. Who did I say that right? All right. So that's the one that I have that's just hers. Now, let's talk about the collaboration ones they've done. All three of the, these uh, perfumers have been involved with these. Um, they've all been involved with the flower bombs. Um, the only one I have that they actually were involved with is Flower Bomb Midnight. So they've done like Nectar, Dominique Robion is on Nectar, but the Flower Bomb Midnight. Now this is a underrated Flower Bomb. This is the sexiest Flower Bomb. I get why they call it Midnight. It has pomegranate and black currant, so it has this kind of dark, juicy fruitiness, right? Them dark berry, darkish tartness but then it has some jasmine it's got a little vanilla in it so it has this really sexy vibe going on this is the sexiest flower bomb flower bomb you know you can say what you want but it's a really good fragrance and it's a very popular fragrance for a reason because it smells so delightful in everybody and this is like amping it up and it is giving you that dark after dark date night this is your date night flower bomb so this is the one you want for that now the other one that they've all been involved in is the the little entre -dees. the only one that they haven't been involved in is with the latest one that i have now but the original la entre -dees we know is a classic it's a stunner you know they just came back with it and did a little juge to it because of course Lantra D is an older Givenchy the original that was created for that was created for Audrey Hepburn you know it was inspired by her but ones that I have are La Entre D EDT right here love it this is like the lighter brighter version perfect for spring and summer because it has that La Entre D DNA but it isn't quite as heavy like the La Entre D's can be so that one then I have Melissima right here. Now, this is the orange blossom one. Still has the DNA, but it's very orange blossom forward without the tuberose. So this is really a, this is a La Entre D for the non-tuberose lover. If you love orange blossom, just try it. It's a beautiful one. And then we have Intense, which for a minute was popular but lost its popularity after we know who came after this one but this one has a nuttiness from that sesame note it's really a stunning fragrance this was the first one i bought and i was like oh yeah this is gorgeous so full bottle this is like you it, it is on par with the next one and just got knocked out by the next one and, of course, when I say the next one, I mean this one. Is this this one? No, we know this one. Rouge. Everybody loves Rouge. It's that sexy ginger. <laughs> La Entre D. She's sexy. I cannot. There, I can't sit up here and say she's not. Because when I got it, I fell in love with it. This was love at first sniff. It's giving you that sexy and got that spicy ginger. Y'all know what it is. Y'all know. And then finally, Rouge Ultime. Which, I've talked about this. I've already, uh, But I will be going over all of them in a minute. I'm going to do a full review of all the ones I have. Um, but this one is gorgeous. It is different than Rouge. It has a more, it has a cacao, so it has a chocolatiness to it. I'm going to go fully in depth with all of them when I do my um, updated La Entre D 
um, vibe. Because I've actually had Nocturnal Jasmine. I got rid of that one. Was not impressed. Okay, not at all. All right, so the, this is the perfumers. I hope you enjoy this. Um, let me know, of course, like I said, my whole squad, let me know which ones you've tried, which ones are. And I know a lot of y'all got the aliens. I know a lot of y'all got them La Via Bells. I know a lot of y'all got some of those. I know a lot of y'all got Portrait of a Lady. Y'all got Carn. Y'all y'all got some Dominique Ropion. All right, now. But also tell me about Fanny Ball and Filippo. If you know of any that you have by them and would like to share with everybody, put it in the comments, too. All right. Oh, oops. I forgot. Y'all got a giveaway. Y'all was going to let me in this without the giveaway. All right. So y'all know how this giveaway works. You're going to get five meals of all of these, including the dark side. To give up five meals you might not get a whole five meals of this one i'm sorry these are small i'm sorry i'm sorry you might get three meals okay but anyway you're gonna get samples of all of these five meal decants except for the dark side i'm sorry and in order to be in the giveaway in the giveaway the emoji leave a comment make sure you're subscribed Leave a comment and leave an and leave a let's see what we want to do. A fire emoji. Let's do a fire emoji because this is hot. These are ambers. They are hot. All right, y'all. As always, be bold. I said all that already. Let me just cut into that again. All right. I almost forgot about this. Let me put that in before I say goodbye. Yeah, I'm still rambling on. Bye. Talk to y'all later. All right, y'all. Thank you for much. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be bold, be brave, be fearless, be free. Talk to you later.